Hi there and welcome to our Kirk in Pennycook service. This is when as Church of Scotland congregations we join together for worship. On these Sundays we're currently following a framework called Holy Habits. This is a series which emphasises 10 specific Christian practices that help nurture our Christian discipleship. Over the past few months uh, we have looked at things such as worship together, praying, serving and signs and wonders. I do hope that you have found the material stimulating and helpful for you in your daily Christian walk and that by looking at these together as churches we can hold the big picture. This month our theme is breaking bread now Jesus gave us very few specific commandments as Christians, but this was one of them. Take bread and wine as I do. Bless it, break it, share it. I wonder what you call this sacrament, this special meal. Eucharist? Mass? Communion? Holy Communion? The Lord's Supper? We'll be thinking about this as we reflect together on what it means for Jesus to be expressed in the breaking of bread and the pouring out of wine. Taste and see that God is good. Come to me, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. We come to God, hungry for refreshment, thirsty for something that will rehydrate the dry places of our lives. God beckons to us, and reminds us that we have a place at this table. Generous God, as we gather, fire our imaginations, nourish our souls, and help us to share all that we have and are with one another. Amen. The darkness vanished away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken, gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of our name. The young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach. 
teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom, now is the day, gather us in and hold us forever, gather us in and make us your own, gather us in all peoples together, fire of love in our flesh and our bones, fire of love in our flesh and our John six twenty five to 40 Jesus, the bread of life. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, you're looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, 
What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign will you give us that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, Always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and you still don't believe. All those the Father gives to me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those he has given to me, but I will raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Amen. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three to 26 For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Of 
With COVID restrictions lifting, one of the activities that we are most enjoying getting back to is gathering again, sometimes after many months, with family and friends over a plate of food. I wonder for you, what are the elements that make for a good meal? I wonder if you can recall an occasion when you had such a meal. Now, some of you will have thought of the quality of the cuisine. Others will have thought of the people that you're sitting around the table with. Often we mark a significant life event by having a special meal with others. In the Gospels, we read of several significant meals that Jesus was part of. Going to Zacchaeus' house for supper, the feeding of the 5,000, the resurrection barbecue, and the breaking of bread at Emmaus. In Luke's account, we read that it was when he broke bread that their eyes were opened. This revealed to the disciples that this was the same Jesus who had shared bread and wine some days before his arrest and subsequent crucifixion. Jesus, if you remember, had organised the Passover feast for his disciples. He'd booked a special place, an upper room, where they had together eaten tradition, celebratory Jewish food, sharing well-known stories of exodus and liberation, but also around the table, there were excited whispers and tales of transformation and healing, but also of dangerous encounters with the powers of the city. And then in the midst of this intimate traditional feast, Jesus had taken bread and to the disciples' horror, spoke words that didn't seem to make any sense. My body broken for you. My blood shed for you, blessed, broken, poured out, shared. The Jewish bread was passed one to another silently with foreboding. And later in the same way, the cup of suffering. You could have heard a pin drop. And yet inside the heads of the disciples, it was as if their minds were ablaze with thoughts. Here were new words a new liturgy that their master was initiating, electrify. For you, they were each invited to participate in this bond, in this special moment with Jesus, to share even more deeply with him, in him. I'd like now to highlight five aspects of the special meal in which Jesus comes to us in bread and wine. The word Eucharist means to give thanks, to be grateful. This has to be our starting place, surely, when we talk about breaking bread. Praise and thanksgiving filled the first Christian's prayer as they gathered for their community meals. It has always been a service of thankful blessing. When we break bread and drink wine together, we are doing so as a sign of our thanksgiving to God for all that God has done for us in Jesus. This can be noisy or quiet, simple or wordy, but we come with gratitude when we come to share bread and wine. Secondly, we remember Jesus. As the first Christians in Acts gathered around the table, so they remember Jesus in this memorial meal. 
do this in remembrance of me. They remembered his costly sacrifice on the cross. But they also remembered his friendship, his teaching about the great banquet to come, his mannerisms, his prayers, his parables and his love. So we need full bodied remembering. The act of the redemption, yes, but also God's grand plan. And Jesus is part of that from the beginning of time until the consummation of all things. And this Jesus we remember is who is with us now. For when we gather to celebrate communion, so we recognise that he is vitally present, uniting us with himself and with each other. Then thirdly, this meal is a foretaste of the feast of the kingdom. When we break bread together as Christians, we do not simply look back, but we look forward to. Praying as we do with Jesus that God's will be done and his kingdom shall come. The Last Supper, built on the act of Passover, which although was grounded in the experience of the Exodus, a meal of hope with a liturgy that the Messiah would come and put all things right. We eat and drink, acknowledging that Jesus is Lord of all, that his kingdom of justice and joy will come. For the early Christians, Christ was truly present in the meal of the Eucharist, but he was also awaited, expected. We remember, we share together in Jesus. The fourth aspect is sharing in the Lord. We see so clearly in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, the self-giving of God. We see God shared with us so that we may share in his kingdom, but also realise that we are called to be people who share together our calling and our lives. In following the generosity of God, we learn to lay down our lives. All right. Is the bread that we break not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there's one bread, so we who are many are one body, for we all partake in one bread. In sharing at this table, we share identity, whatever our background, race, title, gender or age. Sharing is practical work that we seem to unlearn from childhood onwards. Sharing ourselves with others is demanding. It goes beyond religious words. Sharing ourselves is humbling. Sharing together is empowering. Sharing together is healing and hopeful. Finally, in celebrating Holy Communion, we see an act of reconciliation. There are some really funny videos around the internet which show people reacting negatively at the moment where it is announced that the peace will be shared together. Some folks just edging a bit further away from that enthusiastic extrovert next to them on their row. Or people fixedly looking ahead with arms folded whilst their tactile neighbour offers a great hug of peace. What do you do? Certain acts can become disembodied religious rituals. But in and through the dying and rising of Jesus, we see hope for the world. As Christians, we have hope that all things in Christ can be renewed. Jesus' death and resurrection is a reconciliation of heaven and earth, a reconciliation of saint and sinner. A reconciliation of the creator with creation. In the Lord I'll be ever thankful. In the Lord I will rejoice. Look to God. Be afraid, lift up your voices, the Lord is here. Lift up your voices, the Lord is here. In the Lord I'll be ever thankful. In the Lord I will rejoice. Look to God, do not be afraid. Lift up your voices, the Lord is here. Lift up your voices, the 
thankful in the Lord I will rejoice look to God do not be afraid lift up your voice says the Lord is near lift up your voice says the Lord is near in the Lord I'll be ever thankful in the Lord I will rejoice look to God do not be afraid lift up your voice In the Lord I'll be ever thankful In the Lord I will rejoice Look to God, do not be afraid Lift up your voices, the Lord is near Lift up your voices, the Lord is near In the Lord I'll be ever thankful In the Lord Look to God, do not be afraid. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. Lift up your voices, the Lord is As we bring our prayers for others to our loving God, please join with me in the response. Generous God, you hold nothing back. Help us to share all that you give us with others. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy of coming together as a fellowship and the opportunity to offer our prayers for others before you. Today, as we focus on the breaking of bread, we give thanks for your supreme and wonderful gift of Jesus. As we break bread at the communion table, we remember with gratitude the wonderful gift freely given to take away our sins. Father, we ask that you would inspire and motivate us to be Christ-like in our generosity towards others. We pray for all those who are suffering hunger throughout the world through war and climate change. We think particularly of the people of Ethiopia who are in a state of famine caused by violence and war and where crops have been burned and farmers have been unable to plough fields and plant seeds. Loving Father, we pray that the violence will end and that humanitarian agencies will be able to work in the country to bring aid. Generous God, you hold nothing back. Help us to share all that you give us with others. Father, we are aware that in our own country, people go hun hungry. And we pray particularly at this time of year, during the school holidays, that food will be made available to vulnerable children and their parents. We thank you for the work of local churches and food banks in supporting those in need and for all the volunteers who help to sustain these services. Thank you for all the support given to the Pennycook community by Food Facts Friends. And we pray that through the sharing of food and resources, your generosity and love will be made known. Generous God, you hold nothing back. Help us to share all that you give us with others. Loving Father, as we move out of lockdown and restrictions due to the number of people in this country who have been vaccinated, we pray for all those who are awaiting vaccination. We pray that the vaccines will be shared fairly with people throughout the world and that world leaders will be motivated to think of others in poorer countries. We give thanks for all the work undertaken by scientists to develop vaccines 
and for all the staff who have worked so tirelessly within the NHS to care for those affected by COVID. We pray for all those affected by long COVID and who are struggling to regain health. We pray that you sustain them and return them to good health. We pray too for those who are feeling stressed and fearful as we move towards greater freedoms. Help us to be supportive and willing to give our time to those who are in this situation. Generous God, you hold nothing back. Help us to share all that you give us with others. Generous God, thank you for the gifts you have so freely given us, for the beauty of the oceans and the mountains and the wonder and abundance of nature. We pray that you would empower those who speak out against all that is contributing towards climate change. We pray for all the countries that will be involved in the Climate Change Conference in Glasgow later in the year and that agreement will be reached on working together to reduce greenhouse gases, the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation. Father, we are aware that the poorest countries are suffering the most, so help us also to play our part in caring for your world. Generous God, you hold nothing back. Help us to share all that you give us with others. Loving Father, during the past year, we have become even more aware of how much we depend on each other. We praise you for the joy we have felt in sharing meals with family and friends and being able to share time with those we love. Our hearts go out to those who have lost loved ones, to those who feel lost and alone, alone and to those suffering poor health. Open our eyes to those in need and help us to be ready to show your love and generosity towards them. As your word tells us, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Generous God, you hold nothing back. Help us to share all that you give us with others. Amen.
from what we know to what we have yet to discover. God is calling us on. From all that binds us to the truth which frees us. God is calling us on. From the blessings of today to the possibilities of tomorrow. God is calling us on. And so on this day and in the days to come, may you know God's generosity and may you find in Jesus the bread of life and may you experience the Holy Spirit at work in your life transforming the water of the present moment into the wine of the kingdom. Amen. <laughs>